that know our programs from the beginning, uh, you know, when we started in 2017, to have in total, I think uh, there is no reflection there, but we had in total eight programs uh, running this year. From one that it was our core business, that was, you know, uh, the startup programs, up to other programs that came here and there, and uh, we were very happy to have those. In particular, I was very happy to have the Newcomer Accelerator Entrepreneurship Program uh, with, uh, you know, IRAP, uh, supported by IRAP. And the reason why, uh, you know, we were very happy for that one, it was because it was the first time we saw a federal government program supporting newcomers in technology. Mm -hmm. And they trust us enough to put together this program. And these are the startups that are going to be, uh, you know, uh, speaking today. So you guys are going to see the pitch from uh, the Newcomer Accelerator Program. And, uh, you know, it was also the first time that we had um, Latin America, uh, the, the government of uh, the city of Toronto, supporting Canadian startups to go to Latin America. We never have seen that before. Uh, it was the first time doing the Canada Tech Expansion Program, which it was, uh, you know, a little bit difficult to put together, but it was possible uh, thanks to the city of Toronto. So as our community uh, continue growing, oh, this year also we have our first unicorn, a part of our portfolio. Uh, we had also, uh, you know, startups winning competitions in national level and international level. It's been an amazing year. And I have to thank, uh, first of all, uh, our partners because you guys have made a difference. Thank you so much. Uh, I have to thank uh, our board of directors like Valerie, because you, with your support and your advice, we couldn't do that this today. Our amazing staff, my goodness. Uh, you know, thank you so much to every one of you. Uh, Luisa, Samuel, Charmaine, Carol, uh, Jordana. You all have done an amazing job this year, and we couldn't have done it without your support. And um, um, I don't know, finally our startups, because our startups, the ones that are a part of the startup visa programs, the, the ones that are a part of phase two, the ones that are a part of a newcomer entrepreneurship program, all of you guys have been trying over and over and over and over, even against the circumstances that we have in a pandemic. So you are truly resilient people, and I really admire the work that you have done. 2022 uh, will come with more news, and I believe that, you know, it's going to be even better for our community in many ways. And of course, we are going to have a lot of challenges, especially with all the announcements that we had today. <laughs> but, you know, this is not going to, the, to be the first time that, uh, you know, we are passing through this, like, um, you know, especially as a newcomers. I believe we have a resilience here and we can bring a lot to the table uh, to provide you know, a strong ecosystem to Canada. So thank you, every one of you, for being a part of our community. And I want to give a big applause to all of you for being part of all this. So uh, now I would like to ask our startups in Newcomer Entrepreneur Program to come here. So first, we are going to start with uh, Terra Valley. Hi, I'm Rebecca from TerraBio, and we're a young company looking to create food reimagined. I've been purchasing plant-based products for years, and I thought that soy and pea protein was the future, but now protein suppliers are warning of skyrocketing prices. Poor crop yields as a result of climate change and drought, paired with supply chain issues as a result of COVID, lead to these surging prices that trickle down to food manufacturers and eventually the end consumer. And then when you see a boom in plant-based protein and meat sales, you start to really see that gap between the supply of functional protein and the ever-growing demand. But what if we could unlock plant protein from something that we already have a ton of? Brewer spent grains are a byproduct of the brewing industry and are full of protein. If we could break down the tough outer layer of the grains and access the protein within, we could create something new with something we would otherwise throw out. 
And TerraBio has created the tech to do just this. We found a way to turn spent grains into a functional protein ingredient for food manufacturers. Introducing Proteina. It's a new unhydrolyzed plant-based protein ingredient. It provides an, a mild flavor base. It has gelation to create better texture and it's made using a low cost process so that we can offer more reasonable pricing. That means it has taste, texture, and price. But because it comes as a byproduct from the brewing industry, it also has an unmatched story of sustainability as well. We're perfecting an ingredient made for food manufacturers like yourselves, and that way you can continue to make great meat replacements, snacks, pastas, and more. We know it's a highly competitive market, so we're offering you something new. And with our local and stable supply, that means there's less uncertainty and more reasonable pricing. Proteina offers a great protein base, but it can also be a binder and a texturizer so that you can create shorter ingredient lists with something familiar, like brewer spent grains. And we know how important ESG goals are, so we source locally and responsibly so that we can make a low impact ingredient for you and your company. We're doing all of this to offer you something different than just soy and pea protein. Not only is upcycling brewer spent grains more environmentally friendly, but it's also more readily available. And it has the traits to create better meat replacement products. We're excited to test the limits of Proteina as we grow. And so we're offering samples as well as larger pilot trials coming soon. Our dedicated team is eager to work with you one-on-one -on -one to create more sustainable food alternatives, and that way we can create a more green future. I'd be happy to answer your questions and start scheduling your Proteina sample round today. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Philip Wadley Edward Correa, the CEO and co founder of Pumpkin Cart, North America's first ethnic food, grocery, and alcohol delivery service for South Asian and Middle Eastern communities. Seven years back, I came to Canada as an international student from India. I was living in downtown Toronto, going to George Brown College. While staying there, I was missing my favorite ethnic food, which I had to take a two hour subway ride to Scarborough, which is uptown, and uh, wait in a line for 30 to 45 minutes to get the food uh, on my hand. So overall, it took me three hours to get my uh, favorite ethnic food. Seven years later, the scenario is the same. We have a lot of food aggregators here uh, to take names of Uber Eats as one, but uh, all those platforms are focusing on a smaller uh, radius deliveries. Uh, they deliver up to eight mile radius. And uh, there is a lack in connecting with the communities. So we thought uh, for the stores to connect to the right uh, ethnic audience and vice versa, we launched Pumpkin Cart, delivering up to 30 kilometer radius. Our target market, we are looking at 111 billion worldwide and a target market share of 2 billion in North America. We have 3 million South Asian immigrants uh, living in Canada and uh, another 1.2 million uh, immigrants will be joining uh, by 2024. This is a small sneak peek of our app. Uh, we have food, uh, grocery, and alcohol. Uh, when we say alcohol, we have products which are uh, unique with us. Uh, those are ethnic brands which are not available in LCBO. We have a distribution license to uh, deliver uh, through our platform. Our business model, it's pretty simple and straightforward. We have a, a B2B model where we get a uh, commission, 15 to 20% commission on every order from our merchants. And from our customers, we have a subscription plan for deliveries. We have $90.95 uh, subscription plan where they get unlimited free deliveries for a month, up to 30 kilometers. And we also are planning to start our own online ordering platform. Uh, that's for 2022 uh, and driver on demand for 2022 as well. The driver on demand uh, will be providing drivers on demand for our merchant partners on uh, a commission basis. Attraction so far, uh, we launched in uh, 2020 June during the pandemic. We so far have 15,000 users with 120 plus merchants uh, and 1.2 million in gross sales so far. 
a go to market strategy is similar to all uh, most of the platforms here uh, we have a couple of unique uh, way of uh, reaching to the market uh, we provide a loyalty program where uh, the customers can get free bus rides we are partnered with presto to provide the same our financial projections we are looking to hit uh, 45 million in gross sales by 2024 a brand collaborations are Presto. Uh, we are part of the voucher program to give free bus rides, a uh, part of our loyalty program. Hotstar is a platform similar to Netflix here. Uh, that's an Indian version of Netflix, Hotstar, uh, owned by Disney. Uh, we have collaborated with them to co-promote each other. Tangentia Ventures, uh, they, uh, we have a strategic partnership with Tangentia uh, for IT and marketing. Plus, they are also our pre-seed investors. LATAM, we are proud to be part of the LATAM Accelerator program here. A comparable business model as Fanchuan, uh, they focus on the Chinese market. Uh, they are also focusing on the niche market, and they have been very successful on their journey. They have been uh, a Canadian company, seven years being found, and uh, with more than 50 million uh, funds raised so far. A team comprises of uh, myself and uh, Vishal Vergis as one of our co-founders, who is our tech lead as well, and Sandra Sebastian, our creative head. And we also have three uh, advisors on board, uh, part of that uh, two of them are, are investors as well. We are currently uh, looking to raise our seed round by February 2022. Uh, we are looking to raise two million in funding. We have partnered with Front Funder to raise one million through their crowdfunding platform. Thank you, uh, and I'm open to any questions. Thanks. Hi everybody, I'm Arnaud, co-founder of Lucount, an end-to-end -end accounting platform for small and medium businesses in Latin America. Two years ago, we interviewed over 150 small and medium businesses in Colombia, and we realized that most of them don't use their accounting data to make strategic decisions. In addition, they never collaborate with their accountant into the platform. So we decided to change that. We built a platform that breaks silos, allowing every stakeholder to collaborate, that let data flow building an ecosystem, that saves time by automatizing process using AI, and is trustworthy thanks to blockchain. We currently operate on an hybrid business model. We have a SWAS model, which is software with a service. The service in this case is accounting. And we have a traditional SaaS model targeting SMBs, but also accounting firms. In addition, we offer on-demand services on payroll, legal, and FP&A. Currently, we have around 20 customers uh, generating an annual recurring revenue of around 50 USD. We had a drop in June because as we are targeting small and medium businesses, most of them have been impacted by the, by the pandemic, but we are growing again. Our go-to-market strategy is going to be based on four pillars. Sales and marketing, lead generation using uh, automation tools like Lemlies, sales navigators, and so forth. Social media presences on Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And above all, word of mouth, because accounting is a trust-based business. We are operating in pretty big market because every firm has to do accounting. So if we take Colombia and Mexico, where we are actually operating, it's uh, about 8 billion USD market. And if we take into account the global Latin American market, it reached over 50 billion. Our main competitors in Colombia are Allegra and Sigo. And in Mexico, uh, it's Compact Day. Our milestone for the year coming, for 2022. We want to release the mobile app, and we want to finish the cross-platform collaboration tool. For, for the first Q1, and for Q2, we want to enhance, enhance our SaaS version. We are two co-founders. I'm the CEO, and Neil is the CTO of the company. He is still based in Medellin with the team. And the rest of the team is compri comprised of Camila, Ishem, Carlos, and Julian, operating in operation, growth, and tech. <coughs> we are looking for funds to hire engineers in Canada where we want to work on the research, research and development part and the blockchain development. Thank you for your attention, and please feel free to me at the after party for any question you may have. Thank, Thank you.
one of the concerns that Miriam had when, when she invited me to this is that she, she, said, she told me, you only have three minutes, yeah. because she knows that I can speak for a couple of hours. Yeah. And a couple of hours. A couple of hours. <laughs> I'm a storyteller, so if you want me to expand on any of these points, I can tell you a story and, and all that. So, okay. so um, my name is Salvador Elanis. This is the first time that I'm, do, I'm on this side. Normally, I'm on the other side with Jimena. I'm, I'm screaming, right? Yes. Am I? Ah, the, the mask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are these three minutes running? Because <laughs> I, already, I already wasted like two minutes in, in the introduction. Uh, so uh, my name is Salvador and this is the first time that I'm on this side. Normally I'm recording uh, all the events with, with Miriam and helping her in other, other stuff and communications. But uh, the company is called the Institute for Creative Exchange, EYES. Uh, is the good eyes, not the bad eyes, you know what it means. Uh, but uh, but uh, we are at the first Pan American creative media company, and we've been working since 2001 as, as uh, production content pr uh, producers. And uh, one of the things that we discovered is that there's very few communication among creators in the Americas, especially from, there's like a division from the, from the south of the, of the US border to the north. And one of the things that we've been working is connecting creators and artists from these two sides of the continent. So um, we've been working more artistic centric or art cent uh, centered since 2016. And we are really the first Pan American organization to offer a content platform for creativity and art funds. And we, we really believe that. We did all the research. There's no uh, there is not a, an organization that is thought for creativity in the Americas. Amazing, no? But, but, but it's true. I mean, it's, it's something funny. Our plan is to become the leading arts and creativity source for individuals and institutions in the Americas. We were joking before, before this meeting because we are the only company, so we can be the leading one. <laughs> so, I mean, we, can, we can occupy that, that space. And we will start a proprietary ICE media platform to catch audiences and distribute our services and artwork. We will work transdisciplinary. We are not specialized in any specific discipline. And we are leveraging in what we call emergency dynamics. The idea is to work in groups and, and, and community groups that are creating stuff or creating products and connecting them with buyers, etc., through a media company. So we've been, uh, we've been operating since 2016 with connecting artists, distributing books, uh, uh, working with creative teams, and, and we, have a, we have a store, we have a, a, an art gallery online selling photography. We're now selling books as well. Uh, uh, and, and the reason why we chose creativity, because we used to do commercial uh, production, uh, is because it's a huge market and it's really underserviced. And the people think that the arts and creativity is a, is a non-profitable market, and, and we believe it's exactly the opposite. We can get a lot, a lot of benefits from it, and it's just a matter of doing this, developing the right, the right product. Our target is composed more or less like this. It's a kind of complicated, but one of the, uh, our, our main targets is really young professionals, young enthusiasts. And this is, this is the reason. The arts audience, which is a little bit like a, above the four, uh, 45 to 50 years old and older, it's already, a, it's already in. So what we want to catch is, uh, is this emerging market of young professionals, especially in Latin America, that are looking to connect with creatives and with artists uh, in, in, in the continent. And uh, these are our revenue streams in general. We have a team of 100 and something, 120 something photographers working in Latin America right now in Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, Costa Rica, Dominicana, uh, doing photography for clients, for clients that we have. So we're leveraging in this, in this force and we're also working with a base of galleries, photograph uh, uh, artists, and here in Canada we've been working with the University of Toronto, with the University of, of Montreal, with, uh, with, the, with UBC, with museums, with the MOCA, with the AGO, with the Royal Conservatory. So we've been connecting all these institutions with artists. And we work also with, with the main, with the councils, with the Canada councils and the provincial councils and the, and the municipal 
okay, councils. And one thing that we're gonna, uh, we want to explore is a copyright market because copyrights is a, it's it's important. We been we have some experience selling copyrights, selling formats for TV, so we want to expand that into the arts market. Uh, these are our financial goals. As as you see, the first year is 20, 2022, and we're very we're very conservative. We Every time that we show numbers, we're like kind of, uh, no, we don't want to go too high. But uh, but one of the things that we're, gonna, we're starting next year is we're starting a big uh, international photography festival to compete with the Europe European festivals. In, uh, it's going to be in, in, uh, in the state of Hidalgo in Mexico. And the government is very enthousi enthusiastic about it. Uh, we have some hacienda, so it's going to be like a big event. So it's it's part of the of what we have as content creation. Um, well, we are the two founders, Jimena, that is in the back in the camera, and me, very good looking, handsome, and intelligent, etc. <laughs> and our needs, are, what we need now is we need to hire uh, technical people because we're we're artists. And sometimes it's complicated to have like the, pro, the the right user experience for a platform like this. So we're really looking to uh, because all, we all have all disseminated like in different platforms, and we're, what we want to have is a proprietary platform. So we need we need a team to put this together and to execute some of the some of the marketing activities and production activities that we have. So thank you. And less than 20 minutes, you told me, no? Uh, okay. <laughs> Less than 20 minutes, yes. <laughs> so guys, um, those are the four companies that are a part of the uh, Newcomer uh, Technology Accelerator Program uh, with uh, IRAP. And again, this was a pilot project where we, sta we started this year and we aim to continue next year. Uh, so the same startups that you see here today, they are going to be finishing in March and hopefully, you know, looking for some funding around, along with the ones that are in the Startup Visa Program as well. Uh, so, once again, I'd like to thank you for coming here. Now we have time for margaritas and food, so please go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you.